Hey Radiant Souls, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather. Welcome for the first time. I'm an intuitive artist, author, animal communicator, energy healer for pets and people, psychic channeler, medium, and I'm on a mission to empower and embolden others to connect with their divine radiant light and honor the sacred connection with all life. Throughout the summer of 2024, we've been going through the chapters in my book, Hey Radiant Souls, A Guide for Finding and Shining Your Light, in something I called the Radiance Masterclass. This is the final chapter of that. I'll put a link to the playlist below if you want to catch some of the other episodes, if maybe you didn't see them. I hope this is helpful and has been helpful for people. And the main reason I wanted to do it is this has been such a year of pivotal changes for so many of us, not only at the collective level, but so many people are going through, just going through it. I don't even have a better way to say it. Going through it at a personal level. Some upheavals, some big changes, um, some things out of left field, as we say. And I just wanted to, in whatever way I could, give this information because the basic premise of the book is that we want to and we need to live from a space of authenticity. When I say divine radiant light, that's what I mean. You. Inherently, you. The best you you can be. But sometimes we get pulled off track and it's hard sometimes to navigate our way back. So the book includes 12 steps to do just that, to find our way back to you. Step number 12, I'm going to be honest, I filmed this a few weeks ago. I filmed this this morning. Both of those videos had problems with the audio. I don't know why. Sometimes that happens. Some of you who have had one-on-one -on -one appointments with me know that sometimes tech gets wonky, lights flash, things happen on the screen, and sometimes when working with other dimensions, that, that can happen. Beyond that, I really think the point of those files being non-recoverable wasn't to frustrate me, wasn't to be like, ah. Oh, it's not supposed to go out. It was to make sure I'm getting the right message at the right time. So a couple of weeks ago, actually probably three weeks ago when I filmed it originally, we hadn't had Hurricane Helene. We hadn't had Hurricane Milton. There were some things on the international and national landscape that hadn't yet happened. And so although the message at that time was great, I had scheduled it to come out now and maybe it just wasn't going to be the right fit. The other thing with my channeling and with really anyone who's channeling is that in addition to the words that are coming through, inherently within that kind of subcontext is the frequency. So the frequency for what was coming through two to three weeks ago may not have been the right and appropriate fit for this material in this time. So, hey, we'll do a redo. I can always consider it just a dress rehearsal and, and come back and get this information out to whoever needs it. So I think that's also part of the message is that how many times have you been dissuaded from doing something and do you still come back and do it? Do you come back and do it belligerently or do you analyze and say, hey, why wasn't it right? Or just with the acceptance that, oh, it wasn't right at that time. Because what we're seeing more and more frequently is that things are in flux. The timing for things is, in a way, the team is saying deconstructed. So even if you think I have a five-year plan or I have a one-year plan or I expect this to happen next month, don't hold too fast to that. Because timelines are shifting, things are moving at such a quickened pace that if you are attached to the when, you may have some disappointment. So that's kind of a side note, not even part of the actual message. Chapter 12 of the book, the reason we're here for today's Radiance Masterclass episode is stand out, you weren't made to fit in. So when I channeled this message or when the download came through originally in 2020, I immediately saw a puzzle and you know how some of the pieces in a puzzle, sometimes you have the corners, you have the ones that are more square and rectangular, but then a lot of the puzzle pieces, especially in the middle, almost have the shape of a person, like a little cartoon person. I saw that in the image and I saw the cartoon puzzle piece or the cardboard puzzle piece trying to get itself up. 
And how often are we locked in to, if you think about a puzzle, often it is representing a picture or an image or a scene. How often are we locking ourselves into that positioning? I'm here. This is where I am. This is how it is. This is how the scene is supposed to unfold. And then how often are we allowing other people to say, you sit there and you be that puzzle piece because then you're going to connect to this and that and the other. So that's kind of the overarching theme of this is none of us are meant to be locked into anything. Yes, we're absolutely part of a beautiful tapestry of life. But the locking in part, the you go with this definition of you, you fit in this box, you'll see with some of the channeled messages from the book how that kind of relates. That's going out the window. And it never was supposed to be who we are. We have this beautiful, magnificent spark within us. We have this beautiful, magnificent light that we shine. And it defies any expectation that we put on ourselves that someone else puts on us. It's absolutely unlimited. So if we are allowing that understanding to come in, how could we ever say, I am bordered by this, I am restricted by this, I am defined by this, because we simply aren't. It's just simply not true. So the channeled message that came through originally with the book, I wanted to share that with you first. Hey, Radiant Soul, many will try to fit you in their box and affix you with a label. Don't let them. You may try to stuff yourself in a box and glue on your own labels to claim a comfortable spot. Don't do it. Whose voice have you traded for your own? What bargain did you strike in the marketplace of your soul that allowed their opinion to mean more than your own inner wisdom? You are exceptional. You are magic and stardust. You are myth and legend filled with timeless universal wisdom. What excites your soul? What creeps in the dark corners at night and illuminates your imagination? What quiet whisper from the future teases your ear in the stillness of your solitude? Feel the rush of galaxies within your pulse. Open your eyes to your own inner light. Listen to your own counsel. You are not made to fit in. You were not made to take sides. You were not made to go along. Remember who you are. Be you by your definition and no one else's. You may stumble, rise up. You may be afraid, steal yourself. You may be hurt, heal from within. Stand out. You weren't made to fit in. So that's what came through originally, and what I really like about that, it touches on or asks us to do some of the inner work, heal from within, it said. And it also alludes to the fact that not only is it the expectations of other people, but it's the expectations and the definitions we place on ourselves. And just like we were talking about time at the beginning of the video today, I think expectation is also something that is outdated, unnecessary, and unnecessarily heavy. It really tethers us to something. So this is a time to not reinvent yourself to feel unsettled, but to bring the awareness and the allowance of your own growth to happen every single day. I think so often, and the other line that I really like in here was about um, what labels have you put on yourself to claim a comfortable spot? Sometimes we really do focus on, I identify with this group or this ideology or this nationality, and that becomes this barrier, this becomes that cardboard edge of me through which I define myself. And really what the team is saying is it's, backwards. That kind of outside in is, it should be reversed. It should be the inside out. And then who we are when we fully blossom, that informs that overall puzzle picture and the overall energy all around us. If you're watching this, you know that. This is just a different way to kind of talk about it. So I also want to share 
something from the book that was a poem that I wrote about 20 or 25 years ago, but it felt like such a good fit to what was coming through in the book that I put it here. And I really want to share it in this video because I feel that um, someone out there needs to hear it. And there won't be a channeled message today beyond this. I want to keep this kind of short since this is now the third time I'm filming it. We'll see if maybe I was just being too long-winded before. Maybe that was the problem. Um, but anyway, the poem is called Jagged. I've been finding pieces of myself lately, like a giant jigsaw puzzle, when the box has been turned over and tossed about, scattering pieces everywhere. The corners are easiest to find. I'm someone's daughter. I look this way. My voice sounds like this. I was born here. But the soul of the puzzle takes more effort, twisting and turning the pieces until they fit. Try as hard as I can, but some pieces aren't meant for my puzzle. They must have jumped ship from someone else's box. Family, friends, critics, all tossed in errant pieces, sometimes with love, sometimes with malice, but always at the risk of changing my personal landscape. Just recently, after years of tweaking the pieces to match what I thought the picture on the box showed, I've come to realize that my pieces, my patterns, have no logic. Shadows become light, grays become color, my design changes by the minute. I find my pieces in the most spectacular places. Sunrises, mountains, oceans, laughter, silly dogs, a warm smile. And I delight in seeing them all click together with their jagged cardboard edges matching up. I hope I'm one of the thousand piece puzzles and as each new friend, new idea, new passion, new love snaps into place, my life will be less like a puzzle and more like a masterpiece. And it's that last sentence, less like a puzzle, more like a masterpiece. I think many of us and there is an element of finding yourself. I say that often. We've got to excavate. We've got to reconnect with our divine radiant light. We lose track of ourselves. We've got to tune back in. We've got to find our authenticity. That's, that's language that's out there commonly. And we feel like sometimes, oh, I wish I'd put an air tag on myself because I don't know who I am anymore. And I understand that. There is a, an irreducible aspect of you that is your core, your soul. But I think, is this a time for us? Is this kind of a, a wake-up call? Is the, the fertile ground of the world around us really ripe at this time for a tilling of the soil, for allowing other things to grow? Kind of like planting a wildflower garden where you just have a seed mix and you scatter it out and who knows what's going to come up but you know it'll be great and you know you'll be delighted by it. And if not, you know you can adjust. Instead of this, who am I? This definition that by definition of that question sounds like it should be limited. Who am I becoming? Who am I right now? Who am I today? And have this fluid approach to it that allows for us not to feel restricted, allows for us to feel unlimited and allows for us to be resilient and feel that, oh, this is a new piece of me. Look at that. I found it. I've been finding these different pieces. So instead of us being part of the overall puzzle of everything, which yes, like I said, we are connected in this beautiful tapestry of life, but instead building your own self as a puzzle and looking at everything that comes in with wonder, with amazement of, oh, I wonder how that fits with everything else. And just having that childlike curiosity about everything that comes into your experience. So I hope you found this helpful today. And um, I'll talk to you again really soon. Have a great day. Bye.